All righty, Coach Day, thank you uh, very much for joining us. Uh, like I said, we'll go uh, one question per person this first round, and then with any time left, we'll do some follow-ups. Start it out with Clay Hall. Clay, lead us off. Yeah, good morning, Ryan. Um, you've been fortunate to get uh, two uh, blue-chip defensive ends out of your own backyard, and in talking with Zach last week, it sounds like he's really found, found his why and revved up and ready to go. I'm just curious about your early impressions of uh, – Jack Sawyer, and he was that guy who started the most recent class, right? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, good to see him get out here moving around. It's so early on. Our guys haven't put on pads yet. And really, a great portion of our entire team, uh, their first padded spring practice will be on Wednesday because we didn't get the pads last spring. So it's exciting to see. It's early on. We're still installing, but uh, certainly the work ethic is there. And um, he's doing well in school so far. So, uh, so far, so good. The, you know, the entire group uh, of young freshmen, uh, you know, coming in in mid-year have made a great impression on our staff. And, uh, and Jack's one of them. Thanks. All right. All righty. Next up, Austin Ward, Letter Monroe. You mentioned that the pads go on Wednesday. What is it that a coach is trying to evaluate in these first two, you know, climate, you know, acclimation periods without the pads? What, what are, have you been watching? last week and today? Yeah, it really it just comes down to you know, how much effort they're giving. Um, and then after you have the first practice, it's how well do you make the corrections uh, on the field from the day before? You know, if you're making the same mistake twice, then something's not right. And really what it comes down to <clears throat> as you start to move on with practice and start to stack the practice, everybody can have energy the first day of practice, but who can continue to, to, to uh, bring it every day? And how do you do that? You take care of yourself, you recover, take care of your body, you get your sleep. Uh, and that sounds like, you know, an easy thing, but it's, it's a lot of guys, it's not. It's time management. It's uh, organizing your academics. It's making sure you take great notes so you can make corrections on the field. And when you start to put all those things together, some guys take off and some guys kind of lose steam. So that's what's going to happen as we start to get in towards the meat of the spring practice. All righty, next up, Dave Biddle, 247. Thanks, Mike. Hi, Ryan. You obviously want to limit the amount of hits your quarterbacks take, uh, but especially for young quarterbacks who haven't had many game reps at the college level or haven't had any game reps at all, how important is it this spring, you know, to get them some live reps where they have to worry about the Zach Harrison and Tyreek Smith hitting them, or is it not worth, you know, the injury risk to have them go live in practice? I think there'll be times where I'm ten tempted to make them live after a bad read or uh, something like that, but we're not going to make them make them live this spring. It's just, there's too much to risk there. So uh, we really haven't done that much. Um, probably not going to do that. All righty. Next up, Bill Landis, the athletic. Hey Ryan, I uh, want to ask you about your cornerbacks um, with, with Cam Brown still working his way back. Who, who else is working on the outside there along with seven? Um, has anyone kind of caught your attention in these two practices? And then with all those guys, just how important is to get them sort of more proficient in man coverage maybe than that group was last year? Yeah, really important. Uh, and, you know, Matt Barnes is, is, you know, jumping into this thing with two feet and um, he's got a lot of help over there now. So I feel really good about what we have going on with the staff, really excited about what I've seen so far back there. Um, but yeah, at corner position, like you said, seven and Cam will be coming back. But then uh, it's a big, to me, it's, it's a big spring for, for Legend Cavazos and Ryan Watts. These are two guys now who have been in the program, and um, this is going to be a big spring for them. You know, they got to really step up. They're going to have a great opportunity to compete, so they're going to have to stay healthy and, and, uh, and perform. And then uh, it'll be fun to watch Denzel Burke. Uh, you know, he's kind of coming off the shoulder, so he's non-contact right now. But, uh, but he's a young guy that's actually made a, a play early in practice day one that kind of flashed. That was exciting to see. So, um, you know, we'll also, you know, probably be moving maybe Cam Martinez a little bit around. He does some good things back there for us. He has some good flexibility. So uh, we also have some freshmen coming in this, this, uh, this summer. So uh, the depth will, will, will be uh, kind of built up as, as we head towards the season. And, uh, but, but they're going to be young. So uh, very, very important spring for the corners. All right, next up, Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Ryan. It was about this point last year when, when spring practice was canceled. How much more normal are things right now? And, and, you know, how important is it that you have a normal spring? And how optimistic are you that you will have a close to normal spring? Yeah, it's very, very important. We actually <clears throat> got outside today uh, for team practice, which was nice. 
Um, so it feels like things are somewhat getting back to normal, but it's, it's extremely important. We, we've kind of felt like I've got to this point, we've got to this point a few times where we're just kind of getting going with the fundamentals. And then we've had different shutdowns and different things getting our way. But um, now we're really getting to the meat of it. Uh, and this is very, very important for us. Um, it's something that I think has hurt us. It's, it's set us back some as a program. And so we're, we desperately need these practices, got to do a great job in the meetings um, and make sure that we're, we'll continually improve our, our techniques and our, our fundamentals so that that foundation is there moving into the, the summer. Thank you. All righty, next up, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on SI. Hey, Ryan. I, uh, I understand that you spent a little time at the Pro Football Hall of Fame recently, and I think sometimes we take for granted that that's right in our backyard. Um, I'm interested if, if you're willing to share a little bit about your experience there and whether or not you have plans to take the team there, uh, and if there's anybody on the team that kind of expresses to you an interest in the history of the game. Yeah, I... Um was really impressed with the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, my son and I went, I guess, a couple of weeks ago now, and it was it was great uh, to see the history of the game and so much about it uh, in the state of Ohio. <clears throat> so many of the, the start of pro football. And I think the Pro Football Hall of Fame has done a really great job of capturing uh, kind of the start of football and then building it all the way up to now and archiving things. Um, I thought it was really well done. It was it was a great opportunity for for my son RJ and I to go in and just learn about the start of football and you know, where the hash marks come from you know the first football that was ever made and when you do it for a living it's interesting you know there's so many different things where football could have gone one way or another in these different moments in time and um, you know someone made a decision or something happened that, that turned the course of of football certain directions and um, very very cool if, if you love football and like you said it's right in our backyard and I would love for our guys to, to see it, to be around it. It gives you a little bit of a sense of where you are. And then to see all the guys who made it into the Hall of Fame, not just make it to the NFL, but actually go on to be a Hall of Fame NFL player. Uh, it's a special elite group and uh, something for our guys to, you know, kind of see and maybe hear the story of some of those special people and their, their stories. So it was really, really cool. All righty, we'll go next to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Ryan, I know you got you lost your top four linebackers. You got to replace all of those guys. I'm wondering, where is the bullet in all of this? Is that still a thing, or have the bullet and the Sam just completely merged at this point? No, no, it's it's still there. Um, it's it really what it is is just it's a hybrid, and you know, really last year uh, it was hard to take those linebackers off the field. You know, we had Baron Browning. Justin Hilliard, Tough, and, and Pete. And uh, we felt that was a strength of our defense were those guys. And boy, they made a lot of plays. Uh, but as we head into um, you know this offseason, again, looking at our personnel and who we have and then some of the offenses that we're going to face and how we need to adapt, uh, we're going to continue to talk about that and figure out you know how the bullet plays into this, this season. All righty, next up, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Hey, Ryan, since we're not able to, to see any practices yet, can you give us more of a rundown of who's practicing with first team, uh, getting reps at those first team spots on both sides right now. Uh, we're rolling right now. So we're, we're kind of um, just rolling guys at different positions. Um, you know, we do kind of some different drills, half line things, seven on seven. And then even in the teamwork, you know, we're kind of rolling a bunch of guys. Uh, we typically have uh, two teams and then the threes and twos kind of get mixed in as we go. So, um, so we, do, we just want to get a guys a bunch of reps. It isn't so much about the team. Uh, we, we talk really about how the spring is about getting guys better individually. And then as we head in towards uh, the beginning of the summer and then uh, towards a preseason, that's when we want to start bringing the units together and the team together um, and get some chemistry that way. But right now it's really about individuals getting better. So a lot of that stuff going on and uh, we'll, we will do a little bit more, you know, scrimmage type teamwork in the middle and towards the end of spring. But right now it's just all about, you know, getting guys better. And so we're going to roll guys in and out and work different combinations. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Hey, Ryan, there's a lot of talk this time of year about guys, you know, changing their body and getting in better shape. Just wanted to ask you, what kind of a role does Kayla Olson play in that in terms of getting guys improving their diets and eating better? Yeah, Kayla's been excellent for us. She's really grabbed onto this role and, and run with it. She's a former athlete. Uh, who goes above and beyond, in my opinion, for these guys. She takes them to the grocery store. She 
uh, customizes each of their diet to exactly what they need. If they need to put on weight, if they need to cut weight, if they have certain restrictions, uh, um, whether it's allergies or things that they, they like in their diet, uh, teaches them how to cook. Uh, she's been over the top and she's a huge part of our operation and we're very, very lucky to have her. All righty, next up, Stephen Mead, cleveland.com. Uh, sort of a recruiting question amongst all the spring stuff. I know you guys keep an eye on Michigan's recruiting board throughout your process because that's your rival and what you're, you're supposed to do. Are there national teams that maybe you guys pay a little bit of attention to, even if it's not necessarily at the same level, maybe teams like Alabama, Clemson, that you know you might see down the line if, when you're trying to compete for a national title? Um, yeah, we, yeah, we're always looking at that stuff. And I know Mark's always uh, keeping an eye on who guys get, you know, but – for us, it's really about identifying the right guys for us. Um, and it's not really so much the guys that we don't get. It's making sure that the guys that we do get are the right fit. And that's really what it comes down to. It's the culture fit. And I think the, I've probably mentioned this before is just, I believe that in, in today's day and age, it's about finding the right fit, telling them why Ohio State's a great fit for them, and then having them choose the school. Um, maybe a little different back 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, but that's really what it comes down to, in my opinion. Now, certainly there's guys that, um, you know, could choose either schools and both are a good fit. And in that case, you know, we could do everything we can to try to um, show them what Ohio State has to offer. But um, one of the things that we've got to do is make sure that these guys choose Ohio State for the right reasons. Because if they do, when they get here, they'll make it work and won't be in a rush to transfer and jump in the portal, uh, which seems to be a trend right now in college football. Alrighty, we'll go next to Patrick Murphy, 247. Ryan, we talked to, to Thayer last week. Um, and he talked about his reasonings for coming back, both academics, um, wanting to be the first person in his family to graduate, but also wanting to improve still as a football player. And I'm curious, your perspective, when, when he told you those reasons um, on, on both sides, because a lot of times guys jump to the NFL as, as soon as they can. A guy that wants to handle both sides of his business and really be ready for, for life once he leaves Ohio State, what would you make of him and his decision? Well, I think first off, he's he's a mature young man who uh, understands the value of the education and what that means for the rest of his life uh, and life after football. Uh, he certainly is going to have a lot of options uh, and opportunity after he's done uh, at Ohio State in the NFL. Um, he's, he's very, very talented. He can do a lot of different things. Um, and uh, his leadership has really stepped up in the last few months. Uh, he understands, you know, being from the state of Ohio, uh, what, what the Buckeyes mean in the state, what the brotherhood's all about here. And uh, he's kind of the elder statesman now in that old, old line room. And, and I think he likes that role. I think he um, appreciates, um, you know, the guys that have come before and he wants to uphold that standard. I've uh, been very, very impressed with him uh, over the last few months. Hey, we'll go next to Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, what's the what's the impact of having Demario McCall back and just kind of a handful of other guys who are super seniors? Yeah, um, I, I thought Demario's uh, attitude and work ethic has been uh, really really good um, this this off season, uh, off the charts, and very very impressed with him. You know, it hasn't always gone exactly the way that Demario's wanted to wanted his, his career to go, and uh, and try to find him a role in the off season. He's tried some different things, and so. We'll continue to, to look to find that. But if he continues to work the way he does and keep a great attitude, then good things are going to are gonna happen for him. Um, and, and there's a, quite a few guys that are that fit that role. And I think it says a lot about their relationships with their teammates and how much they love Ohio State. All righty, next up, uh, Tim May from Letterman Row. Tim. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Coach Day, I was wondering, you know, the last 10 years or so and maybe – even past that, you've been part of uh, basically defining and then identifying uh, starting quarterbacks and stuff. And I'm just wondering how much has that process streamlined as you've gone along, you know, both on the college and the pro level, you've had that experience. And and then do you fight like in days like this, an early quarterback battle, uh, fight having a first impression that, that lingers, if you follow my draft, uh, making it a definitely a day-to-day -day, uh, battle? Yeah, no, you're right. Like you said, you can't label somebody early on because it's such a developmental uh, position. And, and like you're saying, I mean, you think about some of the guys who made it to the NFL along the line, they've they've hit adversity some way uh, along the, the, the course to where they've been. And it's it's who can kind of handle that adversity and, and work to get better. Uh, so, yeah, 
it, it doesn't all come at once. It's, it's all part of the process. It's part of the learning. Um, you know, and you get around guys, you can start to get a feel for uh, how much it matters to them. And I think in the end, that's the thing that I've found with quarterbacks. If they have enough talent, if they care enough, and if they want it bad enough, then usually it'll work out for them. And, uh, and that's something we keep an eye on. But like you said, on the, on the field and how things go, we just want to kind of keep building, put one foot in front of the other. And, and like you said, don't, don't label early on. Just let it, let it play out. Let, 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 let these guys compete. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. All righty. Next up, Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Sorry, Ryan. Um, all right. So I think this is what Nathan was getting at. So like normally we're, we get to come like for the first day or two of practice and we can eyeball a little bit. Cause all off season is just like, well, we think these guys are at this position and who the maybe first team guys are. And I just am worried. I don't want us talking and writing about stuff and being like, Holy moly. We're like dealing with the wrong guys here. I guess maybe you can't run through the whole team, but I would encourage my brethren for if we can get as much information about that. So I'll ask about the linebackers. I think we all assume that Taraja and Dallas are among the leaders at Will and Mike, but can you just give us an idea to make sure we're dealing with the right guys when we talk about who's in the mix at linebacker? Yep. Taraja and Dallas are both playing linebacker. Um. <laughs> You know uh, what I'm saying, right? I just oh, I know you make assumptions and I don't want us to be wrong. There's always a couple surprises and we want to talk about the right guys. Yep. No, I mean, uh, like you said, there's, uh, you know, at linebacker, uh, it, it's it's really the guys who played last year. You know, the Kayvon's in there and Dallas and Taraja and uh, Cody Simon, Mitchell Melton, uh, Tommy Eichenberg. I mean, there's a great group of guys in there. Uh, Craig Young's in the mix. You know, he's also, you know, done a few things where he's worked outside a little bit. Um, uh, but for the most part, it's really, you know, the guys who were there last year really haven't moved anybody's position. Um, the D linemen are, are, you know, all the returners are still at the same position. Um, you saw Lathan kind of play some safety last year. You saw him play a little bit of nickel, especially on third down. Uh, we, you know, I think that he's, he's done a really good job of that. And that's, that's an opportunity for him to grow in that role. Um, and, and then it's really like, okay, now who with Marcus Williamson having a really good off season and, and uh, played a bunch for us last year, you know, finding that mix of, you know, the nickel safety, um, uh, strong safety, free safety, you know, what is that all going to look like? And I think that's something that you now we're excited to find out. Uh, we don't really have the answers to that yet. And then, like you said, you know, having those linebackers in there, um, you know, fitting in, but, you know, we're not going to change schematically what we're doing. So. It's still four down. It's still, you know, two or three linebackers in a game and, you know, either five DBs or four, uh, four DBs in a game. Uh, but really, I can't think of any other um, position changes. You know, Craig Young is, is probably the one that's um, done a little bit at safety, a little bit at linebacker, uh, can do a couple different things. But other than that, uh, everybody's kind of where they were uh, as we finished up the season. And like when you say Craig, little safety, little linebacker, is that kind of bullet? Is that what you mean in there? Or is yeah. that just? Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, no problem. All righty. Have some time for some, some follow up around here. We'll go to Austin Ward, Leonard Monroe. Ryan, you, you mentioned last week, the uh, running back competition. Do you consider, I mean, even with master's experience, do you look at that as being wide open? And was there any thought when we're talking about maybe position changes that steel could have potentially helped at linebacker this spring? Um, I mean, right now steel's playing running back. Uh, and and uh, Master is the incumbent. Uh, he certainly has, uh, has has earned that right to be the incumbent. Um, I know those other guys are, are hungry and want to get reps, and and they will. So that'll be fun to watch those guys improve over the spring. Uh, and and we do have quite a few uh, line, uh, running backs in there. So uh, all guys have had great off season. You know, Steele has had a great off season. Mines had a really good off season. Marcus Crowley's kind of off of his uh, injury. Uh, looks looks to be ready to go this spring. Uh, and then the two young guys are, uh, have made a good impression early on. So fun to see. Fun to see these guys play as the pads get on and, and watch them compete. But, um, you know, Masters got the most experience there, and, and he certainly is the incumbent. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. All right, we'll do just a couple more. Uh, let's go to Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. 
Yeah, I want to ask you about the offensive line, and particularly the interior of the offensive line. A lot of speculation that Harry will will move to center. Um, how firm are you in that? And where do Matt Jones and, and obviously Paris Johnson, Dewan Jones, how do you think that's going to shake out? Do you have any idea at this point? Well, I think one of the things for us in the old line is having flexibility. Uh, like you're saying, you know, somebody like Matt Jones being able to play center or guard. Uh, when Harry gets healthy, being able to play center or guard. Uh, someone like Paris being able to play tackle or guard. Um, you know, the more flexibility that you have, um, you know, the more options you're going to have. And, and the idea is to find our best five offensive linemen. That's it. And, uh, and if we can do that and get those guys on the field, uh, that, that's the ideal situation for us. Um, now, how does that fit in terms of position specificity? That's, that's what it comes down to in terms of figuring that out over the spring. But, uh, but the more that guys can do, the more roles, the more value that they have. I hear you right and say when Harry gets healthy. Yep. Yeah. Harry's uh, non-contact right now. So um, you know, he'll still be, and probably will be throughout the, throughout spring. Okay. All righty. We'll go next to Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Hey Ryan, you mentioned, you know, Denzel Burke earlier as a guy who had flashed in, in practice. Is there anybody else these first couple of days who's really kind of flashed, made some plays, caught your eye? No, too early, too early. We'll, we'll get the pads on Wednesday and get an idea. Like, I think the big part is we've been doing some decent amount of teamwork, but for the most, you know, really it comes down to taking care of each other. And then once the pads get on, then you can really start to compete. It's hard. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I, you know, there was a seven on seven play where, where Denzel kind of picked the ball off and, and uh, kind of flashed, and that was exciting to see. Uh, but what we'll see when the pads get on, that's when, that's when the real football starts. All right. We'll do two more. Uh, first to Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Yeah, Dublin back on the running backs, as you're evaluating Trevion Henderson and Evan Pryor this spring, what are you looking for those guys this in this spring period? Um, especially, I guess, once once contact and things started, what do they have to show you this spring that maybe leads to a real role this fall? I mean, how quickly they can pick up the offense and then first off, ball security, who's going to take care of the football? Um, you know, the fastest way to, to find yourself on the bench at running back is to turn the ball over and not have ball security. That's the number one thing in our program. So, uh, well, at least on offense. And, uh, and so we have to take care of the football. And so that's critical. But then how quickly can they pick up the offense? And, uh, and then, you know, the reads, you know, it's different when you're just handing them, you know, taking a handoff and kind of in high school, uh, you know, maybe a little different than it is here. So we have, we have, you know, certain plays that are blocked for a certain read. And we need those guys to kind of uh, make sure that they're they're following their reads, and then and then pass protection. In the pass game, they got to be able to have to protect. Uh, another huge part of, of a young running back. Ready? And last question. Uh, go go to Bill Landis from the Athletic. Ryan, uh, how have you broken down the quarterback reps here through these couple of practices? And, and now that you've gotten to see these guys kind of spin it a little bit on the field, um, any anything stand out to you? Any impressions of those guys? Uh, yeah, nothing early. Uh, we've been rolling them um, so that the, the reps have pretty much been split up equally. And um, it, again, still early, so, some good things, some other snaps that are just OK. Um, but like like we said, it's just the process. They're learning. They're they're gathering information. Uh, all good things for, from all three of them, though. So um, I certainly have not been disappointed uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Still very, very young, though, a lot to learn. And, uh, you know, again, who can learn from their mistakes quicker? and make the adjustments uh, faster is, is, you know, really going to make a difference in the end. All righty, Coach. Thank you very much for your time. appreciate it. Right, hey, Ryan, you. anything new on Marcus Hooker? Uh, nope. No updates there. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, guys.